Hello everyone, my name is Corazar, and welcome back to the Vintage Story Guide. We are back in the world in 1.19.3, and that means that there are some new changes to be aware of. And I didn't want to start this episode back at the Drifter Pit, but we are going to go back there and address a couple things here real quick. And the biggest change you will find in 1.19.3 is that drifters have been changed so they can spawn on stones, small stones like this on the ground. This is pretty bad news for us because, well, we were kind of relying on this feature or this quirk to keep drifters from spawning and keep ourselves safe while we were hunting them down and killing their kind and, you know, just being mean and nasty back to them. So that means that we can go ahead and just pick up all these stones here. I know that will be a relief for some of you. Not so much for me. And down here too. Alright, that is all nice and clean too. Now, the question remains of what can we do to keep ourselves a bit safer during Tapora Storms? Frankly, I have no idea. There are a few things we could try. One of them is that drifters don't really like spawning on slabs or partial blocks. They will if they have to. But you can kind of cheese it a little bit, I think, to at least reduce, if not eliminate, the amount of spawns that we get when we are down inside our drifter pit. Barring that, we may have to just abandon a pit design altogether, but I'm not quite ready to give up on that one yet. Okay, I've got some materials in hand that I think might help us mitigate this change somewhat. Now, we won't be able to make the top portion here safe because we have it very sort of open and airy, and that's going to keep us from really making this feel cramped enough for drifters to stop spawning. But I think what we could try doing here is we could take our chisel in hand and we could just chisel out like this. And then, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Undo that one, copy that, and just copy this all around here. And TIL that your pantograph will remember its last creations in between game sessions, which is very interesting to me. So to dress this up, to go ahead and remove all of the sandstone and replace it with andesite. Not quite like that. These are, of course, all chisel blocks. Now, why are you a different color? This game makes no sense sometimes because I pantographed all these. Their lighting is all messed up now. Okay, somewhat better. Still not sure on this one, specifically. That block there just doesn't want to cooperate with lighting. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just bring this design down to the floor here. Although, I can't get up anymore, so we're going to have to tear out these guys anyway. Like so, and drop some more ladders in here. Like that, and boy is that... <laughs> oh, that's pretty ugly. Whatever. But let's dig these guys up. Combine them with the marble we already have. And then we will just build this back up to meet this section right here. Okay, there we have that. That pretty much fits the original aesthetic of the build. And I kind of like having this extra little lip of andesite here. Now, the next thing we can do is we now have a two and a half block space for drifters to spawn in here. And that means that it's actually going to be more likely to have them spawn than before if we had set stones on the ground. So what we can do here is we're going to bring in some of this pre-chiseled stone here. Might have to move these lanterns, actually. Let's move them now. We'll put our chiseled blocks back in here, I suppose, just to get rid of this dirt. Tuck some up here, and we'll pop these back on these ledges here. Now we can come in with the blocks for the ceiling. And we might move that chest as well. And let's go ahead and just chisel all these down with a hammer in our offhand. There we go. And we'll go ahead and move our trunk down to here after we deal with this bit of a mess right here. And there we go. Now I have zero evidence that this is actually going to work, but that's what we're going to gather during the next temporal storm. But in theory, what we should have here is we should have what 
the drifters see as a one block high or one and a half block high spawning space because they don't like spawning on slabs, like I said. They should be looking for the nearest full block to spawn. So that would be this block here, but they're going to look at it from about halfway up. Well, actually at the top of the block space here. So they'll see this space from here up to here as a block and a half. The regular standing drifters shouldn't be able to spawn at all. The crawlers might spawn on occasion. So we'll have to see how this works. This might not do anything. If it doesn't, then well, shucks. Then I guess we're I guess we're done for. But I want to see if this works, and if it does, then we can reuse it in a later design or build. And this is not quite finished here. There we go. Now, in theory, one nice thing is that if this does work in general, it should make it easier for us to aim at and then harvest the drifters. The only problem being is that it'll also make them a bit more accurate when throwing stones at us. Now, that isn't a huge deal because we have some armor on, but it is a consideration. Anyway, that is that. I hope that's that for a while now. Let's see if these are fixed yet. Nope, still broken. Tyron, your music discs are broken, or your tuning cylinders are broken. But let's get home and talk about some of the other stuff that I've done between episodes. Not a whole lot, but worth mentioning. One such event is that I went and panned the rest of that bony soil. We had about 40 couple blocks, and we got some interesting stuff. We got a few rusty gears, we got some extra flax, some copper bits and rough emeralds, a bit of gold and silver, and three more lore books. So after I put away some dirt here, which by the way, I am sad to report these crates no longer work with the Crateful mod. It crashes if you try to use it. So you'll need to uninstall that. But now that I have some space, let's go ahead and check out these books here. See if any of them have any material we haven't already read before. Oh, letters three of eight. Let's go ahead and just open that up and I'll let all of you read that. It's a very short one. Nothing new, I guess. Doesn't say there's nothing new in these pages, but there we go. And letters five of eight. Okay. So we skipped four. That's interesting. I didn't think it did that. So apparently here is five of eight. And there we have it. I'll put these away at some point in the meantime. But I did want to point out that I have been fiddling with some settings. And I think I found a way to get some smoother video output. It's a little jankier on my end because I'm trying to record 60 FPS video on a monitor that runs at 165 hertz. So it's not even a multiple of 60. That makes it a little bit tricky sometimes to get a smooth frame rate for recording, but I think I found a way to do it. Let me know if the video is smoother or not. I was noticing that during recordings, I was sort of getting a lot of sort of stuttering and some jankiness. There will still be some, and I can even see some when I move, but some of that is from the game just not having a very stable frame rate. And the things I've done to modify this have made it more stable, but as you can see, not perfect by the little blips on that graph down there. But that is that as far as in between episode shenanigans, I'm going to get this room cleaned up and then let's start on today's project. Good morning, folks. I realized that I am a sneaks Hobbitses. I lied to you because we do actually have something to do over at our drifter pit because I forgot that I went to the luxuries trader down in our claystone area and they happened to have some yellow glass finally. So <laughs> this has been a long time and a half coming. But we finally have some yellow glass to replace this weird brown stuff. There we go. Much better, much brighter, much happier. I also came over here and I made us a second bear and wolf pit because I have a suspicion that the bear pit over yonder is not close enough to the bear spawning area or something because, let me show you here, because we have four bears in here. And if I'm not careful, the wolves will actually popcorn themselves out of that hole, so we're going to just be careful about that. But yeah, we have four bears in there. I even had five at one point. I think one got out or something. I think it popcorned its way out. 
So, yeah. So, I've built a small pit over here. And as I can, I will bring the other critters over yonder. Now, the first project I want to hit today is actually kind of a small one. One that's not on the schedule. On the schedule, we have backyard flower garden trees. I'm kind of leaning toward number two and number 3.5 kind of together today. But before we do that, I want to address this guy right here in conjunction with something we found in a ruin not too long ago. When we went out in our first 1.19 video, we found a chandelier. And I have a bunch of candles and I have a few more I can put together. And I want to get our chisel and hammer back out and I want to go and reposition that whole assembly over here that's holding our lantern and change it up to support our chandelier instead. So let's grab you and go over here on the ground for now. And I'm actually going to just swap these two blocks since we already have the needed stone or the needed slate in this one. We can just repurpose it. Now the chandelier is going to want to be centered on the block and it will need, I believe, a four by four base to hold on to. So we're going to just pillar up here, I think. Or we could maybe do the non poor man's version of pillar and do ladders. And I'm going to remove this thing and then we'll sort of re-add it in a bit. And now as you can see, this might or might not attach down here. Oh, it does. Nifty. You'll see it's kind of like a black bronze color. It doesn't quite match the slate, but it's pretty close. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make this a bit of a chain kind of look. Like so. But then I'm going to flare it out a bit here. Like, like so. And then we'll kind of do the chain appearance on this side too as well as over here. There we go. Vaguely chainy. And then we're going to drop our chandelier. Now, as you can see, this doesn't actually provide any light at the moment. It has an add candle indicator. We can add up to eight candles. Each candle will give a progressively higher amount of light. And there we go. You probably didn't see it because of YouTube's compression but this got very slightly yellow. And that means that we now have some candlelight and the chandelier is actually the largest or greatest light source you can have in the game. It's about like 22 or 24, I don't recall exactly, but that is actually higher than the lined lanterns 20. And this is actually a regular lantern, so it's only 18. But this will keep this room and the hallway pretty well illuminated. And it'll have a nice little yellowy glow compared to the lantern that we had before. So that is that. I'm going to go ahead and clean up and we're going to move on to some landscaping, I think. But first, a word from our sponsor, Terra Preta. Ah, I got you. You thought I had sold out. No, not me. Not here. No, I wanted to address an elephant in the room and that is Terra Preta. I realize there's been a big change to it. And I haven't mentioned it yet, at least not since upgrading to 1.19. And that's because I really can't do anything interesting yet to show you what's different. What I can say is that the roles of Terra Preta and high fertility soil have been reversed. So we made this soil a while ago by taking some medium fertility soil, which we have in these crates here, and up in our windmill area up here, we left a lot of stuff to rot for 20 days. And as you can see, I'm doing it again because I wanted to run a second batch to show all of you how to actually make Terra Preta. That's right, you heard it. You can make Terra Preta. In fact, you have to make it. You can no longer find it out in the world. So here I have Terra Preta. We're going to take a look at the recipe for it. You can see that each single block of Terra Preta now requires eight compost, two in each corner, four bone meal, one on each side, and four charcoal at the center. So a pretty pricey block, all told. But if you instead kind of move the bone meal around and split the charcoal out and put a block of high fertility soil in there, you can get two terra preta per crafting. 
So on the one hand, I do like that it is giving us a reason to actually have bone meal and compost around. I don't like that we use so much compost. I feel like compost is so hard to get in the game unless you have massive, massive farms and are rotting like every animal you kill, which I mean, we've killed plenty of bears and wolves and things and we probably haven't spoiled all of that meat. But I do wish it was a little bit more generous just for the compost's sake. But we don't really need to repair anymore because our farms are really well stocked and they've been running fine for a while. And I'm not really planning on expanding them. Uh-huh, I tricked you again. Because I forgot to mention that the whole stones don't stop spawns thing applies to our basement as well. So for the time being, I'm actually going to block these guys off to keep drifters from spawning down those stairs and coming up and annoying us. So yeah, we'll get to that in a bit, just not at the moment. And also, now that it's night, we can go ahead and take a look at what these candles do here. So. Here is no candles. We have no extra light coming from anywhere but outside the room here. One candle. So a bit of brightness here. Two candles. Three. Four. Five. Six. I think this is about as bright as our lantern was. But then we have seven and eight. It's like it's daylight in here. Check it out. That is a real nice touch. All right, let's get outside for some landscaping so that we have a backyard to actually look at and enjoy when we sit and have our tea here. So the first thing, of course, is let's get rid of this ugly thing. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, this thing. I'm going to cut you down to size, I think. I think what I'll do here is I'm just going to hop down here. Let's just bring this up a little bit. So let's do this. We'll bring ourselves up as well. Get rid of these two since we have to have a continuous line of unbroken blocks leading into our blue cheese cellar. Even though I'm not really planning on making blue cheese anymore, it's good to just have it here. So let's go ahead and bring this out just a few more blocks. That should be plenty. There we go. And we'll just dig our way out. I'm going to put a little bit of a... Well, I'm going to put the stick there back together, I guess. And we're going to just put that right there. We're going to fill this rest of the way up. Perfect. Doing that kind of gave me an idea of what I want to do here. Actually, I should actually uh, unblock that. That was here, right? The whole point of this is that this needs to be unblocked. <laughs> Silly Corazar. I think it could be fun to turn this hole into a well, a dry well. It'll be one that no longer provides water. But we can turn this into a bit of a well. That way we can have some kind of covering over it and we won't fall into it and it'll actually look decent. But I think first we need to chop down some of this land. I think I'm going to kind of turn this land into like a bit of a hill over here. So I'm gonna push some of this back a little bit and make this a bit of a steeper slope coming down to about here so that we have a bit of a flatter backyard here behind our house. And then I'll also kind of chop some of this back here. And this way we can have like a little entryway into the underground part of our barn here, but it'll open out into a wider area. And we're going to do that by just cutting this way, I think, almost like a 45 degree angle, but I'll kind of smooth it out to be not quite so geometric. And then we will use a stone retaining wall, and I brought along some stone with me to build that with. And I also wanted to go over with you some of the new options we have, because we have already played before with, of course, cobblestone and dry stone and cobblestone. Now you'll notice the dry stone now fits a lot better with the cobblestone. The gaps here used to be a lot darker, like very, very black, and they're still kind of on the gray side, but they do mix a bit better with the 
adjacent cobblestone. Now what we didn't have before was this aged ashlar. And I kind of feel like the aged ashlar should be maybe swapped with the uh, dry stone. I'm not sure. The dry stone is still a very dark block comparatively. I feel like this is almost more of an aged dry stone look than the ashlar, aka stone brick. But yeah, we now have a fourth block to play with in our palette for mixing colors. The difference is that we can't actually make these aged ones. You can only get them by breaking existing blocks. So we do have to be careful about how we use them. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get started on this landscaping, at least the diggy diggy hole part or the diggy diggy saddle shaped area of backyard part. And then we will start filling this in with features and decorations and other odds and ends to make it interesting. Let's get to it. Now, I've heard some people vocally ask why one would want to get to steel. And my answer is this right here. I would not want to do this without a steel shovel or several, given that a single 32 by 32 area of blocks dug out will use up one third of a steel shovel's durability. Alright everyone, and with a day and change of work, we now have a somewhat flat, more attractive, more navigable backyard. Except for that, I didn't put that there. And now if we sit in our chair, we can actually see, I said if we sit in our chair, we can actually see out a little bit into the backyard and even see our fishing shack over there. Now the next thing I want to tackle before we get to the retaining wall here is we should probably connect these up with some paths. I'd like to make a little path kind of meandering out here, kind of following the curvature of the land here, and maybe even kind of unsquare this a little bit. What do you guys think? There we go. Let's do something like that. And then we'll have it kind of meet up here at this corner. Just going to grab my spare shovel because this one's about to break. So let's start by just digging the rest of this path straight out here. And we're going to turn it at an angle here to meet up with this like so there we are and then let's kind of just spring it off of here and kind of just feel our way over to the fishing shack a little bit and then we'll kind of come in in a moment and we'll just widen it so it is our standard two to three blocks wide two on straights and three on diagonals There we go. We've met up there, and I think we should be pretty good to go ahead and widen this a little bit. Let's widen it from this side, I think. And I'm going to go ahead and do that and get this going all the way back to where we started. And there we have it. A simple little path over to our shack. And looking at the map, yeah, I think it looks pretty organic. A nice sort of dental curve to it. Let's go ahead and get our path blocks out here using the pick block mod, which I think should be integrated into the base game. It is that useful, and I'm not sure why it wasn't already in the game. Actually, I don't remember who, but a long time ago I asked why there wasn't a middle mouse pick block button. And I don't recall who, but someone responded and was like, oh, it's just so hard to implement. And I'm like, really? Somebody made this as a mod, and it's a standard implementation in other games. I'm not quite sure what's so hard about it. Anyway, we have it now, and that makes me pretty happy. And there we go. This could maybe use a bit of a widening. Yeah, let's do that right there, I think. And then right here, we're going to put two little slabs. And then we're going to dig up these dirt blocks here, and probably this guy, and we're going to replace those with some light mud brick. I do like it. And this one here, we will again come back in with a chisel and add it back in that way. And done. I think that works pretty well. I could almost do some more of our outdoor fencing right here. 
just more for the aesthetics than the actual function of it. Let's go and grab that. Why are you still holding the chisel like that, sir? <laughs> Let's just put a couple of these down like that. Just like that. That should be plenty. Okay, now for our retaining wall, we're going to start it here, this edge of the door, and bring it out to right here. And we're going to use a combination of granite, but I think I might come in with an accent of something. I don't know yet. Maybe, maybe chert, just to sort of bring in another material that is native to the area. I might top it with some chert. That could be kind of fun. So let's do some more digging. And we're just going to use the same kind of strategy I've mentioned before, where we kind of cluster the same types of blocks together so that they can kind of help mesh into the other block types. And a bit of this and maybe a little bit of cobblestone up here. And I am going to leave probably most of the top blocks here as dirt, just as a reminder that we are going to come back through and top it with something else. And there we go. They start to our wall. I'm going to get some chert and see what we can do with that. Now for the chert, I'm kind of thinking something different. I want to do maybe like a flat topper. Let's see. Let's try it here and see if I like it. You know, I think I don't, but I think I know why. And it's that I want it to be a bit more saturated, a bit darker. So, of course, these are not chiseled blocks, so they're going to break down. But let's go and polish these right here in our inventory. Let's do all of them for now. And yeah, there's something bold. That's a bold color. And it will kind of bring out some of the reds that we have on the other side of the house and bring them out over here. And since we have less of it, we can use the bolder color to kind of use less of it while doing more with less. I am going to chop down this weird bit here, I think. I'm going to pop these in here real quick. And then note that this drops down to there. Oops. And we'll just kind of move this to here a little bit. A little blobby thing sitting here. We can maybe plant something cool here. I don't know. Good morning, everyone. It is the next day. And one thing that I wasn't sure of was whether or not I wanted to line the paths with gravel. And I think I do, but I don't want to line this side of the path here because then I have to get rid of the flower garden and I don't really want to do that. Another option would be to move the path one more block away, which might actually be a better option. I might just do that. You know what? Let me get some more path blocks to shore up some changes here. And then we're going to do exactly that. And we'll line this path like so. There we are. And of course, fill this back in. And then I think we're going to leave the path. Ooh, we should I do this guy too. Looks a little funny. There we are. And then as far as where to leave it off, I think, because I don't really want to do it the whole way into here or anything. This would look kind of ugly because we wouldn't have all this room for greenery. So I think I'm going to kind of cut the... Nope, you close, you close. I'm going to cut the graveling off right about here, I think. So we'll start it here. And maybe I'll also go in and like get like a piece of sandstone to make like a little pillar or something. Just to sort of have something to visually cut it off here. Let's go ahead and we're going to dig all this out and replace this with gravel. Now, as for whether I want to gravel up this part of the path, I don't think it's worth doing it here. It might make this area seem a little too built up. So, I think I'll end the graveling here and, like, here. And I'll do a similar thing, where rather than gravel, I will put up a little, like, pillar or obelisk or something. Just made of, like, sandstone brick, maybe, or... Ashlar, as they call it these days.
Uh oh. We are a few blocks of gravel short, but luckily we have a gravel patch right over here in extreme bear -tory. So I'm gonna get my nerd pole material here. And I'm gonna go gather some of that up and then I'll be right back with that to finish up this job here. And after just a brief stint over there, we have more than enough to finish out this job, except for this one here. And to finish these off, we're going to do one, two, and three. It's a bit meaty, so I might slim that down with a chisel in a moment here. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Yeah, this is a little bit too meaty. Let's try chiseling it down. I was thinking of maybe using some dry stone wall, but I think chisel is probably a better option here. And we can even maybe drop some lights on there, some bigger lights. I might want to keep them kind of square. Let's see if it looks good square. I like that. And then if we put these up here, we can put these up here as if they are like old lanterns, like maybe this is an older part of the house or something. So we don't have the fancier lanterns. And in fact, you really can't see maybe that one there. But you can't see many of them from this side of the house. So that could be fun to have here as like a different kind of style just for these little spots here and there. So I'll chisel these guys down and drop a lantern on top of probably this one here since it's farther from the house. And there we go. I think it looks pretty good. This one might look a little bit naked without a lantern on it, but I think it still helps kind of end or mark the end of this graveling of the path here. And hey, both of our Mediterranean cypress trees have grown. That's pretty cool. I wouldn't mind if this tree had grown a little bit taller and a little bit pointier. Not sure why it's sort of cut off there with a wider top. But yes. Oh, yes. This is what the doctor ordered. Now, for our little design over here, I think we should get started on this. Let's go get some materials. Now that it's nice and calm, we can probably work through the night on it. But I want to get some materials, and then I'll meet up with you when we are ready to start building there. Okay, so for our little well it's going to go here, I want to start with some granite dry stone. I think it's a nice kind of like rock that's been wet, you know? Well, I'm going to put some wood here. We'll chisel these down into support posts for the little roof. And the roof is going to go on top. And it will be made of slate cobblestone slabs. Actually, this one needs to not be where it is. Oops, nope, that one can stay. Come back. I didn't mean it. And in the center here, I do want to chisel something. I'm going to start by placing you there. We'll see if this works. I might have to raise this up a block in case the chisel block doesn't count as being an open air block, but I think it should. And let's start chiseling. I'm going to shave this down. We'll even use this a bit to push this a bit like that. And we can kind of just come in here and cut this down a little bit. And then let's just try copying this. Copy you, and do that, and then spin you all around in, of course, the wrong directions. That should probably work okay. It might be worth bringing this out, like so. And then we can kind of just shave this corner down here on all of these. That should give us a decently round well. Oops, I missed a spot right here. There we are. So, let's go ahead and chisel these guys down. We're going to knock out a bunch of this. There we go. And let's shave this down. You're still hanging over farther than I want you to. So, let's pull these out once more. That looks better. Then we can just do a bit of this. And I realize that I'm chiseling both sides, like both blocks here. I'm just going to copy in the end, but it does help me mentally to just sort of get a better feel for how the whole thing will look once it's all done. So yeah, it's burning through chisel durability a little bit, but we have steel chisels. It's fine. It'll be fine. Okay, let's knock 
these blocks back a little bit. And yes, we are indeed using slabs since they are now much more chisel friendly than they used to be. There we go. And we can go ahead and just kind of chisel these guys down a little bit. Oh, and a temporal storm is approaching. Hey, we can test out our new temporal storm shelter. That should be fun. We'll die a lot. I hope not, but we might. Okay, so there we have a little well. It's currently blocked off, literally, with an actual complete block. So let's go ahead and chisel you and get this out of the way. Okay, so we now have a little winch here. The winch tower needs a handle, so let's pop a handle off of here where it'll be centered. There we go, a little winch. And then for the rope, we're gonna add some bamboo. I wanna add it in kind of this direction, I think. But we'll pretend that this is some kind of rope and I can't add it to it the new way. We're gonna block this off and do this the hard way. I'm going to have maybe a little bit of rope hanging down as if the bucket snapped off at some point. There we go. And now we have our little, yeah, our little well. That's cute. I like it. And I hope this still works as a cellar down there. Now, something else we can do to kind of make this feel like it's a little bit less used is we can come in here with our shovel. And let's kind of like bust down some of, uh, right. Let's bust down some of the dirt here as if this has sort of been trod a lot. Let me get our sticks back too, bonus. So maybe like this is really well worn. Maybe this square here because it's where we would stand to actually use it. But then like for the path home, we might just sort of like break a couple here. And maybe we have worn this down in the past, or our ancestors did, and the grass hasn't quite grown back yet. And maybe we got some of that sort of extra dirty gravel from that one ruin a couple episodes ago. Let's grab that. There we go. Kind of mix this in a little bit. So maybe you like these two blocks here are this sort of dirty, wet gravel color. Yeah, I like that. There we go. We'll also kind of cut down the grass right here because we would have run through here often enough to smash the grass flat. There we go. And once that one fills in, it'll look a little bit more natural. So there we have like a little path that's been worn into the ground here. But I'm going to go put things away and get ready for this temporal storm. And I'll see all of you in a couple minutes. All right, everyone, here we are in our bunker. As you can see, I have our steel plate armor with us. That's because I think we might need it, and I will wear it, at least going into the temporal storm. I've also brought our hand planer, because one thing we can do is if we find things spawning down here with us, we could try lowering the ceiling by two voxels or two micro blocks. And that is the lowest that we can lower the ceiling and still be able to walk under it. If we do a third one, we cannot. So I'm going to leave it like this for now. And if we end up being assaulted by drifters like crazy, then I will adjust it as needed. And we'll try it and see if it works then. So I'm going to gear up and got our spears. Got eight more spares in here. And my goodness, we are slow. <laughs> oh, man. And yeah, I'm going to see how this temporal storm goes. Okay, folks, here we go. I've got my shield out. I can swap to my docks if I need to. Put my back against the wall, and I think we are ready. See how this goes. 
Oh wow. Tempora gear? Why not? The double header is here already? Wow. We're gonna be really bad at throwing the spears though. That's okay. Oh, we didn't get Jones part. Okay. So I guess you don't get one with every double header. That's alright. It is good to know though. But so far, I don't want to jinx it, but so far so good. I don't like the uh, spear throwing <laughs> while we are doing this. We're not very good at it. Alright. Skip the spears. We're going to go for the uh, box. Well, so far still so good. We're maybe about halfway through. And still nothing has threatened us here. Wow, a third temporal gear. My goodness, this is... You're spoiling me, game. A fourth temporal gear from a deep drifter, no less. Wow, my goodness. Oh, there we go. One of them got in, okay. So apparently, when we have been struck, it also prevents us from doing damage. That seems like a bug to me. Well, everyone, we made it through. We did have that one corrupt drifter spawn with us here. And that would have given us a pretty bad time if we didn't have the heavy armor on. So I'm going to go ahead. I am going to, in fact, lower these by two microvoxels. And that might help mitigate that even further. Now, we didn't get a Jonas part from that double header, which is a shame, but... I guess we've learned that we do not have a 100% chance to receive those as loot. So, do with that information what you will. I'm going to pack up, and we're going to get back to the last bit of decoration that I wanted to do here. Which is mostly to do with trees and flowers. Okay, so here we are, coming up back for what should be the last time for this episode. is I want to get some trees in here. I also want to kind of prune the trees, the acacia trees we're growing here for wood, because this is more of a utilitarian purpose. We're not doing this for the aesthetics. So we're going to tear these guys down pretty quickly. Not even going to shear them because we have tons and tons of seeds. And I thought for a second that the chimney up there was a black bear. That's a pretty good cell phone there. Okay, excellent. Oh couple more logs and seeds there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set down some redwood trees. And we're going to put down some redwoods and we're going to surround them with some pines. And I think the first redwood is going to go somewhere over here, like maybe down here. Yeah, let's put one right here. Let's bust this. And I do like to surround redwoods with pines because the pines look kind of like smaller redwoods so they kind of fit in pretty well and we're just going to let the redwood grow over there i'm going to put a few pines over here so they look like sort of the redwood has dropped seeds and now the seeds are starting to grow and then i want another redwood probably over this way just to break up the soul tower here we can have three towers so let's put our second redwood probably about here. And I'm going to knock down those two trees too, I think. We'll put another pine tree, say, up here. We'll put one over here. That's the redwood there. So oh, that's not a redwood. That is something else. You're an ebony sapling. Get out of here. What are you? More ebony. Uh... Six days, I'll wait for you. I'll wait for you. So those should grow up into nice little stands of trees. And I could even stand, <laughs> I get it, to do one more group of those right out here. And then we can kind of just surround the well with some more trees. And then I'm going to come in here with some bushes and some flowers because we like those kinds of things. All right, folks, it is the next morning. I spent the night putting a few more of these little strawberry designs around. I think what we'll be able to do is once these trees grow up is we can then kind of figure out exactly where we might want to put some more of these. I feel like I'm going to want one more maybe back here. 
some color in the background, and probably one or two up on that hill. But I want to see what the landscape looks like with our trees grown. Now, we could go into a backup of the world, like make a backup right now, go into the backup, advance time by year, and then watch the trees grow. But I think I'd rather just wait for them to grow naturally, and we will handle this new shrubbery situation in a future episode. But I hope you like this little sort of flanked walkway up to the well, and I think once these trees grow, I do want to fill in some more shrubberies around here, and maybe some more flowers, just sort of give it a little kind of secluded glade feel. But that is going to about do it for this episode of the Vintage Story Guide. I hope you enjoyed the landscaping and building and turning this land that was very hilly and lumpy into a proper backyard with the path over to our little fishing shack back there. And I hope you learned something from my tinkering around with the drifter pit during the temporal storm. And maybe if you have your own drifter pit and you want to explore that more, let me know if you find any new ways to mitigate the threat of drifters during temporal storms. If you enjoyed the episode, let me know by leaving a like or a comment below. And I'd love to have you subscribe if that's your thing. As always, my name has been Korazar. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.